Hi, this is Mark at M2M Technology, and today I'm going to talk about getting data from your Sage database into Excel. There's a whole bunch of ways you can do this by exporting reports or exporting the list views from Sage, but if you want to build a spreadsheet that you can refresh and customise to your liking, this is the way to go about it. So, this is going to be a slow walkthrough detailing the steps to get you going, but once you've got that link established, you can go wild. Your level of Excel foo is the limitation. And then anyone with the ODBC link on their computer can refresh the data. <coughs> Once you've got the connection set up, you can use it for any number of things. But if you're having any problems with that, by all means, get in touch. This video is based on a request I received this morning from Robert. Thanks for the request, Rob. And just to let you know before we get started, my colleague Simon's going to be driving the screen here. I think he's been getting a little bit jealous of all my internet stardom. And he wants to get in on the act. So, say thank you, Simon. We'll start by clicking on the Windows button. And then just start typing ODBC. And then choose the 32-bit version. We're going to try and set up a system DSM. Because that means that anybody else on this computer can use it. That will depend on your permissions though. If you're unable to, you can set up a user DSN in exactly the same way. It just means that other people won't be able to use it. We're going to call it MMS, because that's kind of the standard. And by clicking on this drop down, you should be able to choose your SQL Server database. If you're not sure what it's called, contact your Sage administrator, contact your IT team, or contact us. We're going to use Windows authentication for permissions here, and that will likely need some setup from your IT team. If they'd rather, you can use SQL authentication like this. It depends on how your IT team choose to permission it. If they're having any problems, by all means get in touch, or ask them to. Here we're going to choose the default database. Again, if you don't know what the database is called, contact your Sage administrator, contact your IT team, or by all means contact us. I'm not going to worry about any of this, we're just going to click finish and then press test data source. You should see it complete successfully. Happy days. We now have a ODBC driver called MMS. As I mentioned before, it's a system DSN for us, but a user DSN would work fine. So now, in Excel, we're going to the Data tab and we're going to get data from Microsoft Query. We then choose the MS thing that we set up earlier. And we get a list of all the tables in the database, which is nice. The tables have got basically sensible names um, the one we're going to pick out now is SL customer account the sales ledger customer account table but you've also got PL purchase ledger NL nominal account you can add individual columns if you want or you can just add the whole table. If you want to do things like filtering for balance, so anyone with a positive balance, stick a filter on to include rows where the balance is greater than a penny, or a hundred pounds, or whatever you feel like, and that'll do the trick. You might want to choose to sort it by balance. We're going to choose to sort it by customer number. Now select the cell you want the table to import to. And there you go. Your entire
entire customer list with filters already built in. Of course you can search these Excel tricks of hiding columns and building formulas on top of those but now that we've grabbed that data we're going to save it to the desktop that's done and here's the file that we've just created we're going to open it now, and as you can see, Excel is protecting us by not enabling the content by default, so big yellow line across the top, click Enable Content, and then you can go to refresh the data. Go to the Data tab, pressing Refresh All. Taking the filter back out again, we can see all the records. And just to prove that it is a live link, let's change the name of some customer. And having saved that change, let's go back to Excel. And if we refresh the data, we can see the new company name there, Abbey Retail Designs. Of course, how you choose to build on this is entirely up to you. We're just showing you how to get started. But if you've got any problems, questions or queries, get in touch in the usual way. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it was useful. By all means, click like, subscribe, comment down below and let me know if there's any others like this you'd like to see and I'll do my best to oblige. Bit of it, that's it, come on.